This video is about naming binary covalent compounds. We use the term binary here to indicate that there are only two elements in the compound. The rules for nomenclature are different if you're naming ionic compounds versus covalent compounds. So the first thing you want to do is to figure out if you have a binary covalent compound or a binary ionic compound. To identify a covalent compound, also known as a molecular compound, you want to look for compounds that contain two non-metals. You can determine whether or not your elements are metals or not by looking at where they are on the periodic table. You can see this line I've drawn right here on the periodic table. This line indicates the barrier between metals and nonmetals. All the elements to the right of this line are nonmetals. All the elements to the left of this line, except for hydrogen, are metals. Hydrogen, even though it's located to the left of the line, is still a nonmetal. Examples of things that are covalent compounds are going to be things like CO2 and NH3, where you can see that the carbon and the oxygen are both to the right of this staircase looking line. To name molecular compounds, we're going to use a table of prefixes shown here. The rules for naming binary covalent compounds are very simple. For this example, NO2, we're going to notice that the nitrogen is written first, the oxygen is written second, and there are two copies of oxygen in this compound. So what we do is we bring down the nitrogen, and we're just going to write nitrogen, and then we're going to get the di from the table, which indicates that there are two, so it's going to be nitrogen dioxide. Now, this is not going to be named mono nitrogen dioxide because we don't need to include the mono in front of the nitrogen unless there's more than one. So if the first element is present just one time we can omit the mono. However if the second element is present just one time we want to add the mono. So for CO it's going to be carbon monoxide. Two things to note about this. Number one, it is not monooxide. And so that means that if you have a case where you have two vowels next to one another like this, you're going to delete one of the vowels. It's just going to be monoxide, not monooxide. The second thing that you'll notice is that the element that's closest to the left side of the periodic table is always going to be written first. And so in this case, the carbon is further to the left than the oxygen. The nitrogen is further to the left than the oxygen. The only real exception to that is compound like water, where H2O is going to have hydrogen written first. So let's look at some examples here. This first one, N2O4, is going to be dinitrogen tetroxide. Again, we have an oxide, so we're going to delete the double vowels. For the second example, PCL3, we're going to have phosphorus trichloride. Third example, Ni3, is going to be nitrogen triiodide. So for this last one, P2O5, the answer is going to be diphosphorus pent oxide. So the question is, how do you know when to not put the double vowels and when to, is it okay to put the double vowels like it was right here with triiodide, but it wasn't okay with tetroxide or pentoxide? And the answer is that if it's an oxide, you delete the double vowels. Um, if it's an iodide, it's okay to keep it. Now earlier I said that normally the element that was furthest to the left is written first, and that's the case for almost all compounds except for those that contain hydrogen, like water, H2O, but it's also not true for group 15 elements. So things like ClO2, and it's just for historical reasons, the Cl is going to be written first, so this is going to be chlorine dioxide. Acids are covalent molecules as well. And so 
that's a different video naming acids. But when acids are not dissolved in water, that is to say they're not aqueous solutions, they can still be named as covalent molecules. And so in this case, HCN is just going to be hydrogen cyanide. Other acids like, for example, HCl or HBr could be named similarly. And in this case, it's just going to be hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide in the case of HBr. And again, this is only when these acids are not dissolved in water that they can be named like this. How are you going to know if they're dissolved in water? You would look for something like a little g. That little g, as you'll find out later in chemistry, indicates that that compound is a gas. And so if these acids were in fact dissolved in water, it wouldn't be HCN parentheses G, it would be HCN parentheses AQ, which stands for aqueous. So if you see that, if you see an acid parentheses gas, it indicates that you want to name it according to the rules for covalent molecules. If you see that it's dissolved in water, like as aqueous, like this one, then you'd want to use the rules for naming acids, which will be a separate video.